Hello and welcome back to the Port Trigger Academy SQL Injection Series here on CTF Security. I am Olajide and in today's video we will be tackling SQL Injection Vulnerability Allowing Login Bypass. We will start our attack with manual exploitation and then move on to automating our attack using Python scripting. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, before we get started, if any part of this video seems challenging to grasp, please refer to the link in the video description box below to check out the introductory video on SQL injection for more clarity. Now, having said that, let's hop straight into today's task. Now, as usual, we are presented with our lab title and the lab description. On the lab description, we have this lab contained SQL injection vulnerability in the login function to solve the lab perform SQL injection attack that logs into the application as the administrator. Now before we move any further, let's quickly create a text file where we're going to be documenting all our activities on this lab. So I'll quickly open up the terminal and let's take this to the right hand side and we can take the actual lab to the left hand side. So what we can do now is to move to the directory we have our SQL injection folders, see the document, see the SQL injection. All right, great. So I can clear the screen and we can open up a text file and we can call it 02.txt. All right, great. So we know that in this lab, we are working on SQL injection in login functionality. All right. So the next information we have here is to solve the lab, perform SQL injection attack that logs into the application as the administrator. So the account we need to log in is administrator account all right so now we can quickly launch the lab and take a look at what we have on this web application so interestingly it looks like we are dealing with a shopping web application right here with a lot of products on the home page but i'm less concerned about this product because our lab is focused on sql injection in login functionality. So what we are going to do is to quickly go to the my account button right here. And this is going to take us to the login panel of the web application. Now we're going to just imagine that we are just a regular user and I'm going to attempt to log in with the admin admin as the default password. And let's see what we get. We get invalid username or password now we know that there's an account that exists on this web application and the account name is administrator so we can try to log in as administrator and then i can just use the password as admin and let's see what happens okay so unfortunately we are not able to log in with this credential now, since we are dealing with SQL injection, the first thing I would want to do is to supply a special character that is able to break the SQL injection to generate an error message that might give us some insights to this application that we are dealing with here. So I'm going to quickly do that. We're going to enter the single code and we can just leave the password as blank and then I can click on the login. Okay, yeah. So we have to put something in there. So let's say password and then i'm going to click on login now interestingly we got an error which says internal server error meaning that the special character actually did something within the application that triggered it to display this error message so we have hope that we might have sql injection vulnerability on this web application having known this the next thing i want to do is put in my payload now, before we start generating our payload, let's try to predict how the SQL backend query of this login page would look like. 
Now, since we are dealing with a login functionalities, our backend query will be similar to something like select everything or a specific column depending on our choice from users, which is the name of the table, then where, which is a condition, username equals to whatever we supply and password equals to whatever we supply and we can end the query so what we are having here is we are selecting all columns from the users table where username equals to whatever value is being entered inside the username field and the password is equals to the value of the password field now it is important to understand that sometimes this password might not be passed in plain text there might be some hashing algorithm taking place within the database but we are unconcerned about that for now so for example let's say we have a user called olajide on this database what is going to happen is whenever olajide types olajide as the username and it types his password to be olajide one two three four so what is going to happen within the application is that let's just have a duplicate of this i'm going to paste that just below here so what is going to happen here is the Olajide will be inserted inside this username parameter. And then we have our password, which is the Olajide1234 will also be inserted inside the password field. Now to break this application, what we can attempt to do is to break out of this original query here. And we're going to be seeing how we're going to do that shortly. So let's just do away with the values we have here, okay? So before we break out of the query, we know that we have an account called administrator. So we'll quickly just copy this and paste it on the username field. And then we're going to break the application. Then we are going to comment out any other query after the username value. So I'll copy this. What is happening here is, Okay, let's just copy this first. I'm going to paste this down. So what is happening here is, instead of having our Olajide value here, we are bringing the name of the account we want to log into, and we are pasting it inside the username value here. So now we now have select all from users, where username equals to administrator, and then we break the application, which is going to close the first quote that we have here. And it's then going to comment out other part of the query, making the other part of the query irrelevant. So what happened here is we have successfully nullified the and logical operator here, which is supposed to bind the username and the password field together in order to authenticate you as the user. So what we're going to do now is to quickly just enter any random password and we're going to click on login okay so we have a timeout on this application so what i'm going to do is to just close this and i'm going to launch the lab again all right so we're going to click on the my account as usual all right so we can copy our payload once more I'm going to paste it in here and then we can just enter any password or password one, two, three, and I'm going to log in. And you can see that we have successfully logged in and solved this lab. And it says your username is administrator and we have the logout button to be able to log out of this application. Now, just for clarification purpose, let's try to understand what has actually happened within this application. As a legitimate user, if you want to log into the application, you are expected to supply two parameters, which is your username and your password. And this username and password has to correspond with what is inside the database. Now, if an attacker wants to bypass this login functionality, what he will actually need to do is to break this application in such a way that the application will not be able to execute this other part of the query. 
And a very simple way to do that is to supply a legitimate username and then use a comment, an SQL comment to break other parts of the query. So now what we are going to be having on the application is now going to be select all the column from users table where username equals to administrator and all other parts will be nullified. So let's copy that out. So in our case, this will now be our query that is going to be executed in the back end query and the password section of the query is going to be ignored. All right, so let's move to the other section of this video where we get to script our attack. And the first thing I want to do is to make sure that I'm still connected to this lab to make sure that we don't have a timeout. All right, so just as predicted, we have a timeout. I'm going to close this and we're going to relaunch the lab. And while that is coming up, let's quickly go to our terminal and we're going to create a new file with the Sublime application. And then we're going to call it 02.py, which is going to be our Python script. Okay, cool. So as usual, the first thing we need to do is to import all the relevant libraries that we're going to be using for our automation. And the first library I'm going to be importing is the request library. Import request library, which is the library we're going to be using to make our web request. Next, we need to import the beautiful soup library, which we're going to be using to extract the CSRF token of our web application. So from BS4, import beautiful soap. And lastly, we need to import the sys library, which we are going to be using to handle exception in the case whereby our application is not able to make requests to the destination URL. We are also going to be making an exception in the case whereby the user enter control C on the keyboard. So we should be able to handle this request using customized message. Now, having import all the libraries, the first thing I want to do is to have a try and accept where we're going to use, no, sorry about that. Try and accept that we're going to be using to capture this error message. Accept. Now the first accept that we need to specify is the case of the request library dot exception dot request exception. Okay, I hope I spelled that correctly. So we're going to be handling that as E. You can use any value in your case. So the next thing we need to handle is the accept the keyboard interrupt. All right, cool. So we have the request dot exceptions dot request exception. All right. So the next thing we want to do is to have our customized message. So the first one here, let's just have a comment and we can say handling network related error in URL. Then for this, we can have handle the use case where the user interrupt the program, maybe using control C. All right, good. So what we're going to be having here is, let's specify our custom message. So in the case of the request error, we're going to have print, we're going to format our print option. Let's have this as double quote. And we're going to say error with the network request. All right, great. So I can also handle the case of the keyboard interruption. So we're going to have print on the next line. 
program interrupted by user so i guess this is this is it then we can have sys dot exit so do we have any error mm, i could also uh customize this um let's say error with the network request and we could have more additional message which is going to be generated by the module itself um let's say we have e which is actually what we have here and then i can just close the application which is exactly what i've done and i can save this now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a url variable and we can use this to collect data from the user and let's just give it a message enter the url all right great so next we need to collect the username uh let me just refresh this so that we we'll make sure that we have not timed out so i needed to close that and let's launch this again so while that is coming we need the username equals to input enter username or let's call it payload slash payload all right great and the last one is since we require a password we can have impute enter password all right good so let's go to the my account so now the first one is the url then we have our username and we have our password so those are the three values that we need to pass into the web application now having gotten this we need our headers so let's just go down a bit and we can say headers equals to we can pass this as a dictionary i remember the way we got headers from the previous video let's just enlarge this and i'm going to right click i'm going to inspect and we're going to go to network let's bring this down a bit and let's just enter any value here so let's say administrator and let's say just password and i'm going to log in now you can see that we have post request and some get request in here so let's just click on the post request and we're going to see the http headers of this request so i'm going to scroll down you can see request headers and from the request headers here we have our user agent so i'm going to be grabbing the user agent just the user agent in this case and we're going to go back to our script and we're going to place this inside the headers so this has to be passed using the string and this value also passed as a string let's just enlarge this i'm going to terminate this one all right so we have our user agent passed into the header variable you can also go to the application and fetch other header if you want but i'm not going to be concerned about that because we're going to be using the request library session object which is going to be passing some of these http headers information so let's go back to our script and the next thing we need to do is let me just save this is to make our request so to make our request let's just head down here i'm oh, sorry about that control z 
All right, cool. So we are going to use with headers, no, sorry, with requests dot session as session. Then we can now make our request. Now you might be wondering, okay, why do I need to use this session object? This is because we're going to be making more than one request within this script. And in order to persist some of the parameters we're going to be passing along within this application, we need to use session object to handle these requests and values across the application. And the next thing we need to do is let's make our initial request. And I'm going to just, um, let's call this initial request in the comment. Now on our initial request, we needed to make our first request to this web application, which is the subdomain.websecurityacademy.net slash login. Now to make this request, what we need to do is to go back to our script and we can create a variable called response equals to, we can make our session.get then we can pass the URL inside this request along with the headers equals to headers. So I hope that was correct. I'm going to save this and we need to print our response dot text. So let's execute our program to see how far we've gone. Uh, I'm going to go to the terminal and let's have this cleared. So let's, do we have it saved? Okay, cool. So we can have Python 3, the name of the script, which is 02.py. I'm going to execute this. So we have an error. Okay, so this is a typo error. So I'll quickly go to the script and where's the print? I'm going to save this and let's execute that again. We have an other error. So on the program interrupt by user, let's quickly go back. So we expected to have this. Sorry about that. That's a silly mistake. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, cool. So let's quickly refresh this. I'm going to copy and let's go back to our terminal and let's paste this in here. For the username, I'm going to be using administrator and let's put in our payload. And for the password, we can just use random password. All right, cool. Meaning that we are able to make a request to this application. And you can see some of the information that we have here. Uh, so this is the HTML code for the web application. And now we have, let's see what we have. What do we have? What do we have? Input required type hidden. We need CSRF token. Okay, so we have our CSRF token in here. Username and password. Do we have any error message here that I'm yet to see? Let's see. Mm, not really. So my account. Okay. So first thing we need to do is we need to know if this CSRF token is required for this application to log us in. And a proper way to do that is to fire up our Bob Suite. So I'm going to bring up the Bob Suite application. Okay. I'm 
Next, start Bob. Close. This is just going to take a few seconds for the Bob to load up. All right, good. So let's go back to our browser. I'm going to switch this to my Bob Suite proxy. And then let's go ahead and try to just log in. Administrator, just a random username and a random password. Then I'm going to attempt to log in. And this is going to get sent to Bob. So we're going to go to proxy and you can see the request being made here on the Bob proxy. Now let's forward this to repeater. And we're able to repeat this request and manipulate things within the request to see how the application is going to behave. Now we have our session ID in here, which you can see. So let's quickly forward that in. So if you scroll and we can search for, sorry, we can search for CSRF to see where it is located. And you can see that the input required type is hidden. The name is CSRF and we have our token generated. Now there's something about this is whenever we try to log in another time, we get another CSRF token generated. So for example, if I send this, uh, I didn't take note of that. Okay, cool. Let's have it here. So we have our CSRF token here. I'm going to grab this and copy. And let's head to our note. I can put this in here. Let's say first CSRF token. And let's try to make another request to this application. So I'm going to just forward all the relevant requests. Sorry about that. Let's go to the proxy. Let's forward this. All right, great. So let's send another one. Let's say we want to log in as administrator again with just a random password. Let's see what happens. And we're going to go back to the Bob suite. And then we have, okay, so we have the same CSRF token. Let's just grab this and compare. And let's just take this into our note, which is practically the same thing. So if we go to the Bob suite and we try to remove the CSRF token to log in to see what happens. So let's see what the application have to say. So we have missing parameter, which is the CSRF token, meaning that this particular token is very, very important because it is used to safeguard against CSRF attack. Now let's see how we can extract this CSRF token from our application, then pass it into our script to be able to make our application to function properly. So let's go back to our Python script. I can save this and let's go in here and just click on enter key and we can have a comment. So we can call it pass the response to find the CSRF token. Okay, cool. So to do this, we need to use the beautiful soup and we're going to create a soup and we're going to use beautiful soup. Then we're going to pass some parameters along, which the first one is going to be response, which is the output of our previous script, which is this one here. So response.text. Then we're also going to be passing in our html.parser. Now we can click on the enter key. And the next thing we need to do is to just create another variable. So we can call this CSRF underscore token underscore field equals to soup.find. So we want to be able to find a particular string within the 
response.txt, which is uh, if you go to the Bob suite, uh, let's go to the repeater. I think I have it on the repeater. Then look for CSRF. So we want to be able to extract this CSRF token from the response.txt. So let's go back to our script. So we have soup.find and we can pass in what we want to find. Now we want to find the input tag, which is exactly what you have here, which is this input tag here. Then we're going to have comma. The attribute we're going to be extracting is going to be, let me just open up our curly brace where we're going to have the value of the attribute. So if you go back to the script or if you go back to Bobsuit rather, you can see that the attribute here is the name attribute. So that is what we're going to be passing into our script name. And then I'm going to specify the name, which is going to be CSRF. Yeah, so I think that is correct. So let me just take a look at that once more. Okay, we have the input, which is the tag name. We have the attribute, which is name, and the value of the attribute is going to be CSRF. And this is the value that is going to be extracted. So let's go back to our script. And then what we can do next is to print this just to make sure it's working. CSRF token field. And I'm going to save. And let's make sure we are not timed out yet. So for now, I'm going to turn off the Bob suite. And let's go back to our application. Let's go back. I'm going to refresh. Okay, cool. So we're going to have administrator and we're just going to have password. I'm going to try to log in. Okay, great. So let's go back to our scripts. I'm going to save once more and we're going to execute it. The URL is going to be this. Our payload is going to be the administrator and password is just going to be random password. Okay, so we have successfully extracted the value and you can see it here. So let's just do away with the HTML respond.txt that we are printing so that we have few information as our output. So I can go back and comment out the response.txt. I'm going to save this and let's just run this script again. Let me close this. So you can see I enter the control C and our interrupt has been handled properly by just displaying the uh, message that we put, the customized message that we put on our script. So let's just go back and we're going to clear this. So let's run the script again, put in the URL and our payload. Let's just use admin and then password, just random password. Great. So we have our value extracted. So let's go back. Remember, we don't need the entire line. Just what we need to pass into the application is just this string right here. So let's go back to our script and we can begin to modify our script. So let's have a new comment. Check if the CSRF token is found. Okay, cool. So if CSRF token, which is our variable that we have, is none, meaning if it cannot find the CSRF token on our URL or on the loaded web page, uh, what is going to actually happen is that we're going to print no CSRF token. Please check your network 
or URL. Just a customized message. And we need to make this a string. What's happening? Okay. Mm, what actually happened here? Okay. So I'm going to save. Now, what is going to happen is the program is going to exit. All right, cool. So in the case whereby we can find our CSRF token, which we're going to have a comment. Let's quickly put that. Extract CSRF token if found. So what we're going to have is CSRF equals to CSRF token which is exactly what we have here on this script here, the entire value here. But now we need to extract just the value here. So we'll go back to the script. And then what we need to do here is to make sure that we call only the value attribute here. And I'm going to save. Then I'm going to print the value of our CSRF. Now, as usual, I'm going to comment out this part because we don't need to print out the irrelevant part. And we just have the CSRF token printed. So let's confirm if this is working. Mm, I think I have an error message on line 33. What have I done? Line 33. Line 33. What is the message again? indentation so is there something actually wrong with our indentation okay yeah yeah i think i did this i'm going to take this backward take this also why do we have this probably i just made an error Let's see. Mm. Let's see if that corrected the issue. All right, great. So let's have our URL. Okay, great. So we have our token generated, which is nice. So let's go back to our script and see what next we need to do. Now, the next thing we need to do is to prepare our data for login. And to do this, let's have a comment and we're going to call it prepare login data. And let's declare a variable. We can call it login data equals to. And we can put this in JSON, I beg your pardon, in a dictionary format. And we can have, we need a username, just like we already know. Then we're going to pass username as the username, which is the value we already have here. Then we also need password. And we're going to pass password as the password. And lastly, we need the CSRF, which is going to be CSRF. I'm going to close this. And we're going to have this uh, CSRF, which is the variable we already have here. Okay, so I think everything is fine. So I'm going to save. 
Now, the next thing we need to do is to make a post request. Remember, the first request we made was a get request. Uh, where is it? Okay, so we made the session.get request. Now, we need to make a post request to send this credential to authenticate us as a legitimate user. Now, to do that, let's quickly just hit the enter key. And we can also have a comment making a post request. And let's save this. So we can have a new variable login underscore response equals to the session dot post. And we're going to be passing some parameters which include the URL and other information. Now, if you want to have a better understanding of this, uh, remember we need to pass CSRF, we need to pass username, and we need to pass the password. So let's go back. So we are passing the URL first. Okay, yeah, URL, comma. Then we need to pass data equals to login data, which is everything within this uh, particular dictionary here. And I'm going to just save this. And there's one more thing I haven't passed yet. We need to also pass the headers that we declare, which is equals to headers. In this case, that is just the user agent. I'm going to save. Then I'm going to print login underscore response, which is this dot text format. And let's see if this is correct. I'm going to save and let's go into our script and let's make sure we are still connected. Oh yes, we are. So I'm going to go to the script. Let's clear this and let's execute. Grab the URL and I'm going to paste it in here. So the username is going to be just admin, just any username. Then the password is going to be password. Okay, so we have our CSRF and our login response.txt. No, uh, this is an error message. That is not what it's supposed to bring. Uh, let's go back. Okay, yeah, I think. That is because I enclosed this in the code. So it just printed out in string. So I'm going to save that again. And let's do that again. I'm going to paste. Just admin password. We have CSRF. Okay, great. And we have our HTML code for the login. And you can see the credential we logged in as is giving us a warning, which is invalid username or password, which is actually great. So now we can now pass our payload into this application. But before we do that, we need to first of all check for login success to make sure that we successfully log into the application. So let's just add some section to the code so we can have a comment check for login success. And we can say if, now remember the other time, if you go to the application, we have, let's say we try to impute the payload we used the other time, administrator, and then we break the query, then we comment out other section, and we just enter any random password and we click on login. Okay, so we are logged in. One of the things that changed on this application is this logout button that we have here. So we can actually use this to check if we are actually logged in or logged out. So I'm just going to copy this text in here. And if we go to the application, so we can say if this logout Sorry about that. I can just spell it log out. 
in the login response dot text so what will actually happen in this case we're going to print a message congratulation can i copy this message from here is it possible okay yeah and let's go back and we're going to put this in here make sure you put it in the comment i beg your pardon in a string and then i can save this so if log out in response.txt print congratulation you have solved the lab okay um is there any other thing we need to add okay so i guess that is all so we're going to save this for our final testing and can we have else let's just add one more else print invalid username comma password or payload just a customized message and i'm going to save this so let's run this again mm print this i have to comment out this so that we won't have to print the login response dot text because that is a lot of message there so we're going to save and let's quickly clear the screen and we can run this again so let's grab our url and then i can paste it in here our payload is going to be just a random username and the password and we run so we have our csrf we can decide to remove this on the code but you can see that because we use the invalid payload here you can see that we have invalid username password or payload so let's go ahead and use the actual payload that we use in the manual exploitation and to do that we're going to clear the screen we're going to run the script and then we're going to enter our url then for our payload we're going to use the administrator we're going to break the query then we're going to comment other parts of the query then we're going to run this and we can just enter any password please subscribe okay so we have a message so did we misspell this or what is actually happening administrator okay so let's quickly check out what the problem is i'm going to go to the script and let's close this and let's launch another lab okay so let's grab this copy hopefully we don't have a network issue this time around so um, let's go back here so i'm going to just grab the url and i'm going to paste it in here and for the payload we're going to use the administrator code and the double hyphen and for the password it can be anything just password one two three and we have our csrf token and you can see that we have congratulations you solved the lab so the error we we're experiencing before was um, i wasn't copying the right url so what i did was i used the subdomain.websecurityacademy.net without the slash login endpoint 
So guys, that is how you solve the lab. And if by any means you enter a wrong URL, so let's say you just copy this and you paste this in here and remove the login and you run. And um, let's say you have your same payload, which is the same thing we're going to be using. And you enter any password. You can see that it says no CSRF token. Please check your network or URL. So finally, let's run this script for the last time. So I'm going to clear. And then I'm going to use, um, let's say, can we just open this in the new tab and just close this? All right, great. So what we can do is to quickly go to the my account and copy this URL. Then we can execute our script. We can paste in here. Our payload is going to be administrator. You break the query dash dash and you execute. And for the password, it can be anything and you just enter. And you can see that we have our CSRF token and we have congratulation, you solved the lab. Okay guys, that'll be all in this video. If you've learned one or two things from this video, kindly like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next video.